我再一次向火焰平台获主，发出低价巨拉令。如果说你们不涨价，我永远不出车。兄弟们，把这个视频顶起来！我不拉低价货，从何做起？我不拉低价货，从何做起？ Well, what is this vehicle? On the highway, there is a 13-meter-long semi-trailer carrying a more than 9-meter-long large truck on its back. What kind of show is this? And on the return journey, the large and the small vehicles are separated, each carrying coal from the Hami mining area in Xinjiang to the Jiuquan railway station in Gansu. It turns out that this is a unique way of coal transportation in China, where the large truck carries the small truck when going to pick up the cargo. And both vehicles carry cargo when returning. This is to increase transport capacity, reduce diesel consumption, and lower toll fees. Chinese people call it a mother-child vehicle. This type of vehicle is not common in Western countries and is used only in China to transport coal from mines to railway stations, steel plants, or power plants. Especially in the Hami coal mine in Xinjiang, the railway transportation capacity is limited. If coal is to be exported from this region to various parts of China, it must be transported by road to a few railway stations in Gansu and then loaded onto the railway for shipment. Therefore, road transportation is essential for the Hami coal mine. It has been reported that the Chinese government is promoting railway transportation for coal mines. Why can't coal mines in Hami, which have one eighth of the national reserves, achieve direct railway transportation? According to internal resources, very soon Hami's entire coal mine will achieve direct transportation from the pit to the train. There will be fewer opportunities for coal transportation by road. However, some people are still optimistic and believe that railways can only achieve point-to-point -point transportation and cannot achieve door-to-door -door delivery. Therefore, there are two transshipments between the railway transport station and the loading site, which almost always require road transportation to complete. Here, a veteran driver who has been in the logistics industry for many years reminds everyone that future freight intensification is the trend, and the transportation environment of small, scattered, and weak in road freight will definitely undergo changes. In this process, road freight will certainly be affected. Road to rail has the greatest impact on the frontline truck drivers transporting bulk commodities such as coal and ore. However, no one can say for sure what the future holds. And even individual truck driver may be affected, according to the TCO analysis report of China's heavy truck industry in 2022, provided by the China Federation of Logistics and Purchasing. The structure of China's transportation industry is different from that of Europe and the United States. In Europe and the United States, individual drivers account for only about 10 percent of the market share. But in China's trucking market, 70% of the capacity comes from individual truck drivers. In terms of income, the income of Chinese truck drivers in 2021 is mostly between 100,000 to 180,000 yuan, which is not necessarily lower than that of truck drivers in the United States and the United Kingdom. Compared with the per capita disposal income of 47,412 yuan in 2021. It's just that their social status is not as high as it was in the 1990s. In the 1990s, if you had a truck, you could make an annual income of 100,000 yuan. According to the data of the National Bureau of Statistics in 1995, the average annual salary of employees nationwide was only 505,000 yuan, which is a 20-fold difference. 30 years have passed. The price of trucks have increased several times. The cost of maintaining trucks has also skyrocketed, and truck drivers have to drive longer distances. But the freight rates have not increased. One driver said that in the 1990s, he drove an old truck and carried five tons of cargo, and the freight for a thousand-kilometer journey was five thousand yuan. Now, driving a semi-trailer truck and carrying thirty tons of cargo, the freight for a thousand-kilometer journey is still five thousand yuan. Over the past thirty years. Diesel prices have increased from two yuan to eight yuan, and the annual toll fees for drivers covering 100,000 kilometers have increased to at least 50,000 yuan. In the 1990s, 
with goods in short supply. If a truck parked at a parking lot, the cargo owner would come directly to the truck to find transportation. However, now the freight rates are so low that they are almost unimaginable. Faced with increasing income pressure, a significant proportion of truck drivers choose to quit. According to a press conference held by the State Council Information Office on November 3, 2020, the number of truck drivers has dropped sharply from over 30 million in 2016 to 17.28 million, or even fewer. Media investigations have shown that the number of truck drivers has continued to decline during the pandemic. According to data from China's business information website Chichacha, lessons for nearly 264,000 logistics companies were canceled or revoked in 2020, a figure that increased to 304,000 in 2021 and 220,000 in 2022. In the past three years, nearly 800,000 logistics companies have declared bankruptcy. Due to the bankruptcy of logistics companies, the source of goods for truck drivers who worked with these companies has decreased, and many independent truck drivers have been idle for the past two years. A survey conducted by Chuanghua Logistics Park in Xindu District, Chengdu, showed that nearly 65% of truck drivers were unable to find suitable shipments within a week of waiting, and even if new shipments emerged daily, the freight rates were too low to make a profit. Causing many independent drivers to leave the freight market, according to the survey data from China Truck Drivers Survey Report Number、no. One, released in 2018, 40% of the respondents expressed the desire to switch careers. However, by mid 2022, nearly 80% of the individual truck drivers in Chengdu's Chuanghua Logistics Park showed signs of fatigue towards the industry. Many of them said that if they didn't have the pressure of car loans and supporting their families, they would not hesitate to leave the trucking industry. Even among those who have paid off their car loans, nearly half of them said they would not want to continue in the industry after the current vehicle they are driving is scrapped. Looking back on the rapid development of the Chinese economy from 1980 to 2010, most truck drivers could lead a prosperous life as long as they were diligent. However, with the influx of capital into the logistics industry, the focus has been shifted from extensive and purely efficiency-driven development to scale, transparency, and efficiency. In the future, cost control and refined management will be the key to profitability in the freight industry. Therefore, even if the market conditions improve, drivers will not be able to earn as much money as before with ease. The recent surge in the use of these kinds of mother-child trucks started in 2020, when the Chinese government began implementing a tow system based on the number of axles, which increased the cost of empty trucks on highways. Many fleets began using the mother and child truck model to cope with this change. As user demand for the mother and child truck model increased, major truck manufacturers followed suit and introduced their own products. Currently, most of the top ten heavy truck manufacturers, in terms of sales revenue, have launched mother and child truck products. According to reports, a set of mother and child trucks can carry a total of 72 tons of goods, and the highest price for a brand new truck is about 880,000 yuan, while the lowest price for a second-hand truck can be as low as 80,000 yuan. Typically, the mother and child truck model features a high roof cap and a 13 meter long, 2.55 meter wide warehouse style trailer as the mother truck, and a flat roofed cap and a 9 meter long, 2.45 meter wide warehouse style trailers as the child truck. In the past three years of the pandemic, using combined trucks for coal transportation was indeed profitable, as happened by internet celebrities. Last year, a set of such vehicles could earn a profit of 10,000 yuan in just three days by transporting coal from the Xinjiang Hami mine to the Yumen railway station in Gansu. The distance covered is about 1,500 kilometers, with fixed cost of 13,000 yuan for highway tolls and diesel fuel. Based on the transportation rate at the time of 360 yuan per ton, the income for carrying 72 tons of coal would be nearly 26,000 yuan. With two drivers working for three days, the total cost of wages is 2,400 yuan, leaving a profit of about 10,000 yuan. However, since February of this year, the price of coal has plummeted. The demand for coal transportation has decreased. 
The transportation rate for delivering coal from the Xinjiang Hami mine to the Yumen station has dropped to 250 yuan per ton, and the income has also fallen to 18,000 yuan. Due to delayed loading, it now takes five days for a round trip instead of three days, with a cost of 13,000 yuan for tolls and diesel fuel and a wage cost of 4,000 yuan for two drivers. Thus, the profit for one trip is only 1,000 yuan and a set of mother and child trucks can only make six trips in 30 days, earning a profit of only 6,000 yuan a month. Transportation teams have responded quickly, with at least 50 sets of mother-child trucks withdrawing from the coal transport route from Hami Xinjiang in March, and turning to coal mines in the western regions of Shanxi and Inner Mongolia. The result was that from Shenmu to Xintai, the price of coal dropped to only 175 yuan per ton, and to an even more dismal 165 yuan per ton to Handan. Only these types of trucks could still make a profit of 1,000 yuan per trip, earning a profit of 15,000 yuan per month. Individual coal transport trucks are losing money. In the coal transportation industry, road trains have completely defeated single trucks. A boss who has been working in the coal transportation industry for over 20 years realized that he couldn't compete with road trains so he decided to sell all 12 sets of his heavy trucks at a minimum price of 800,000 yuan. He also sold more than 10 sets of 11-meter high-side traders. In 2018, a single large truck was sold for only 80,000 yuan. In late March, two major Chinese automakers launched a new 9-axle double trailer truck, which began trial operations in Xinjiang. The launch of this vehicle was highly anticipated and in high demand with limited availability. The 9-axle double trailer truck features two containers and has a total weight of 88 tons, with a cargo capacity of 64 tons. Its price is similar to that of new mother-child trucks, ranging from 800,000 to 900,000 yuan. This truck is a methanol hybrid, belonging to the category of new energy vehicles. It is currently being tested in Xinjiang and enjoys a 36% discount on highway tolls. In the neighboring Inner Mongolia, some sections of the highway even offer a 80% discount on toll fees. A truck driver commented, with a 9-axle double-row trader, each carrying a 9.5-meter small trader, isn't it possible to make money even with lower transportation fees? Experts believe that the 9-axle double trader truck will certainly have an impact on the use of mother-child trucks, but it is unlikely to completely replace them, as double trader trucks have higher requirements for unloading size and equipment. However, industry insiders also point out that the application of 9-axle double trailer trucks is not limited to coal transportation, but is also widely used in port transportation. These vehicles will be tested in other regions in May this year, which will be another wave of harvesting for small-scale individual drivers within China's road transport industry. Vigilant drivers and fleets have already started selling mother-child trucks. For example, a set of mother-child trucks, which only ran for a year, cost only 200,000 yuan, while the original price is at least 800,000 yuan. In fact, this type of double trailer truck is not a new product. This mode has been in operation for nearly 20 years in some countries in North America and Europe. Top Chinese automakers have been developing this type of double trailer truck for years under the government's guidance.